Can you tell us about Viva's plans for the next few years? We are in the process of deploying over a thousand sites, uh, which would be, uh, I think, finished within the next couple of months. I believe, and I think this was what Viva's strategy has been from the beginning, is to really look at 5G from a holistic point of view. A lot of operators are looking at 5G as a standalone technology. This sort of philosophy is flawed. 5G requires significant upfront investment. There is a lot of ambiguity with regards to how the future growth of revenues are going to be. And, and I think not just Viva Kuwait, but every single uh, mobile operator is facing uh, a bit of challenge with regards to the business cases that are being touted for 5G. This is not something which is new to 5G. I think it's only a matter of time that, you know, I think these things would be smoothened out. And This is one of the, I would say, the golden key in unlocking the 5G potential. Our entire 2G plus 3G plus 4G spectrum is 85 megahertz. And with C-band, we have gotten 100 megahertz of additional spectrum. Now, for any mobile operator, the biggest and the most valuable asset that you have is the spectrum. Now, today we do not have much 5G traffic. And if we allocate the entire C-band spectrum only for 5G, I think we are not being very prudent with regards to the usage of our spectrum. Huawei has been one of the pioneers in an area that, uh, you know, when we started this whole concept of why don't we share the C-band spectrum between 4G and 5G, we are currently allocating a portion of it to 4G, TDD, and a portion of it to 5G. And, and I would really like to thank Huawei for the R&D efforts and the commercialization efforts that they've been making over the last one year to make this wish of ours a reality.